This presentation takes a look at the International Building Code, or IBC. I'm Anirudh Nathakar, Sales Application Engineer for Cummins Power Generation. The IBC is the model building code for the United States. It combines a number of regional codes. Critical equipment is considered as part of a building, so it has to meet the same requirements for withstanding both seismic loads and wind loads while continuing to operate. The code has gone through three editions in recent years. There are significant differences in the latest edition of the IBC compared with earlier versions. For one thing, both seismic and wind requirements have become more stringent. Also worth noting is that vendors can self-certify their products with some conditions. Seismic and wind requirements vary with location. The pink, blue and green areas on the map are subject to the seismic standards, while the areas along the coast in white have wind standards in effect. The three key elements that dictate applicable IBC design requirements are the version of the code, seismic design category, and the component importance factor, IP. It's worth noting that the old UBC zones from 1 to 4 have been replaced by more exact maps from the U.S. Geographical Survey showing how severe an earthquake can be in a given spot. Here's the term I mentioned earlier, the seismic design category. The seismic design category is derived from three factors. The soil profile of the site, the intended purpose of the building, and the mapped spectral accelerations for short periods. The intended purpose of a building can be divided into four categories. Here is a description of category three, which includes schools, jails, and power stations. The description of category four, which includes hospitals with operation rooms, fire, and police stations, and emergency shelters. By the way, actually calculating the seismic design category is something that consulting engineers do. But you should be familiar with what goes into that calculation. Another key term is importance factor, or IP. Equipment is assigned an IP of 1.5 if it is needed for the continued operation of the facility. Emergency standby power systems are in this category. Equipment in this category needs to be certified as meeting these standards. Certification can take a couple of forms, either pre-certification or actual testing on a shake table of the units to be delivered. Cummins Power Generation uses a variety of certification methods. Some smaller generator sets and automatic transfer switches are shake tested, as in these video clips. Larger units have been certified using analytical methods. Cummins is in an excellent position regarding seismic and wind certification. Cummins self-certifies enclosures by way of mechanical calculations rather than shake testing. Here are some things to keep in mind about installations. The recommendations in the T030 application manual are still valid with some minor changes that affect anchorages. For the fuel system, don't forget about the day tank and its connections and flexible fuel lines. Isolate everything so it can withstand vibration. Complete isolation is needed, including the wiring, which should be stranded. Make sure there is strain relief and watch for equipment limits. The photo shows proper conduit installation with enough flex. Make sure that the piping is supported by the building and not the generator sets, and that there are power supplies for heaters, vent fans, and chargers. Thanks for listening. For more information, contact your Cummins Power Generation distributor or visit www.cumminspower.com.